Let's go through this. Uh, there was only one paper in the room that was perfect. I would have expected that we would have had at least a few. So let's go through this process. Um, so I just handed this out to you. It's your snapshot. I want to go through the problems and then I want to go through your practice quiz. And then I'm going to give you a second practice quiz that you will finish today slash tonight. And then we'll go over that tomorrow and then quiz Thursday. So hopefully any issues you're having, I say there's only one person in this room that as far as I'm concerned for the next five, six minutes can just tune out, you know, who you are. Um, the rest of you, each of us in our own way is making special little errors. So let's take a look. Uh, so the first one was negative three M minus four had a lot of success on this problem, just for the record. So step one should have been to add four to both sides. And that would leave you with negative three M is greater than um, what is that? Nope, that's, I copied the problem wrong, didn't I? That's a 25. That's my bad. So if we add four to that, we get negative 21. And then we divide by negative three. And I'm going to show this step just because I think we're we're close to the point where, where I can say we all get this. But when you divide by a negative, um, you have to switch your inequality symbol. So it goes from being an is greater than to an is less than. And then, of course, negative divided by negative is a positive seven. So this should have been your solution for the first one. And as far as the graph is concerned for that one, uh, I don't know who you are. I don't remember because I flew through these pretty fast. Don't put a bunch of tick marks on your graph, all right? It's just you're making more work for me and you. Just mark the number that you care about. The only number that matters in this graph is seven. Seven is the boundary where points go from being solutions to not solutions. I don't care about all the other stuff around it. No one does. So seven is going to be my mark. I'm going to circle it. I am not going to color it in. And I'm going to shade to the left because that's what the... Um, is less than that's where the numbers that are less than seven are located is to the left of seven so good there all right and this is where the troubles began so let's take a look at the second one we have two x minus seven is no more than eight x plus 13. so if you're a move your variable to the right kind of person uh, that's fine. If you're a move your variable to the left kind of person, that's fine. Honestly, I'm kind of past the point, um, but I do want to show you something. I'm going to kind of do something weird on purpose here, and I won't remember who I'm talking to at this last part, but you'll know because you'll look at your paper and you'll be like, oh, he's talking about me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2x because if I'm this person, then I've really taken to the idea of I just want to keep my variable positive. And that's good. So I have negative seven is less than or equal to six X's plus 13. And then of course, my only move now is to subtract the 13 back across. And I'm in a position now where my variable is on the incorrect side. It's, I shouldn't say that it's, it's on a, it's on a kind of a bad side just because of what's about to happen. And let me get to this. It's amazing how little trust you people put in your teachers, the adults. You're like, adults don't know what they're talking about. A bunch of crazy old people. Um, so there we go. That is the answer. And I was blown away, actually, as I went through these this morning as to how many people just completely poo-pooed my advice and did this. And you know who you are. You're going to know because you're going to look down at your paper and you're going to see and go, oh, my gosh, he was right. He's talking about me. You're like, oh, look at me. LOL. That's a less than sign. So I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to shade it in and I'm going to go to the left. That is absolutely embarrassingly terrible. You should be very ashamed of that if you did that, because that's just you thumbing your nose at your friendly teacher's advice. My advice, you'll recall, was to always put the variable on the left because of stuff exactly like this. That's a terrible graph. And again, I understand your logic, but you need to know that I've seen this thousands, literally thousands of times where having it backwards causes people to make dodo graphs. This answer is defective. I should always express my answer in a logical way so that my brain and my pencil put on the graph what I hear. And what I should have heard is X is actually greater than or equal to negative 10 thirds. That really is where you might say, hmm, maybe I should become one of those put the variable on the left at all costs kind of people. Because I saw it just this morning in a stack of 22 papers. I saw it like 20 times. 
not just on this problem, but again, on the next one and the next one. It's like, come on, folks, put that variable on the left. And then you look at that graph and you're like, oh, my God, that's just, what, am I, what was I doing? The graph should obviously go from negative 10 thirds to the right, because that's where all the X's are that are greater than a number. So if you graph to the left on that one and you have the answer that I have crossed out in green, good thing we're talking about this now and not Thursday. There's at least six or seven of you just in this room. You know who you are. Get your variable onto the proper side. And I will say there were a couple who very stubbornly left their answer like this one in the purple box and still understood how to graph it. So if you can do that, good on you. Like, I'm not going to get in the way of that. But if you're going to graph it like a dodo bird, get your X on the correct side. All right. Any questions on that second one? Uh, third one is I'm going to go ahead and not copy the problem down because you have it on your paper, but I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So your first step in your own handwriting should say negative Y minus two Y plus four is less than or equal to three minus two Y plus two times four is, of course, eight. So something about the end of that line where a lot of people put four just because I think your brain checks out like you feel like you're done. You're like, oh, I'll just put four. Like I know to change the sign, I'll just put four. So don't forget that that minus two has to distribute to everybody inside. That includes the minus four. So from this point, I'm going to combine my terms on the left. My minus y and my minus two y conjoin to make minus three y. And on the right hand side, three plus eight is, of course, 11. And then I'm going to copy down the minus two y. A couple people put five. It's like interesting. I think the brain plays tricks on us and it sees things that aren't there. It's why I circle terms and I have been for 20 plus years is if I circle my like terms, I'm less likely to assign signs to the wrong numbers. We see a minus sign and maybe our brain tricks us into thinking it goes with the three or something. But you see now clearly it does not. And then from this point, if you're a variable on the right kind of person um, or if, if you're a variable on the left kind of person, then you're going to add two y like this. And I do understand that the drawback to that is that this math problem in this white box is kind of a pooper because it gives us negative one Y. But I maintain based on what I graded this morning that maybe just putting the variable on the left is what we all need to do. Negative, positive, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, and while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and subtract this four like this, might as well do two steps at once. And I'm gonna be left with, uh, don't change the sign, 11 minus four is seven. So the bad news is I have a negative on my Y, but the good news is I'm not gonna be one of those knuckleheads that forgets to put it on the left because while well, I've already got it, I've already forced it over to the left. And now when I divide both sides by negative one, <clears throat> or just a negative, you can call it, it doesn't matter, you wind up with Y is switch the sign greater than or equal to, negative seven. And your graph on this one, you should have just marked negative seven. The circle should, of course, be colored in because it has the or equal to with it. And then the greater thans go to the right. Numbers that are greater than something are always on the right side of that. Okay. Jason, you with us? That's good. All right, last one, and then we'll go through the practice quiz. I'm assuming you're done with the practice quiz. So uh, the the first thing I'm going to do is, again, not copy the problem down. I am I am going to take an approach. We saw this yesterday, and I'm going to try this. And if you like this, then someone in this room did it, and someone later in the day brought it up, and I thought, maybe I should start explaining it this way. The distribution on the left, I'm going to hold off on. So I'm going to leave the left side like it is. So I'm going to do negative two-thirds uh, minus one-half, and then I'm going to leave the parentheses on this side. So if you like what I'm about to do, then you can take this and kind of add this to your arsenal. I am, however, going to distribute on the right, though, because what that's going to do is, A, it's a peaceful distribution, but B, bless you, is it's going to pull the hidden fraction out of the parentheses. So the minus is going to hit the, um, I need my W first, and then I'm going to have minus three quarters of W, minus two, and minus five thirds. That's kind of a wasted step, but it's nice for those of you that really dread the whole, some of the multiplication we have to do. Uh, so now what's nice is all the fractions are out in the open and we can go hunting. So what are we going to multiply by? 
Yeah, 100% 12. You could use any multiple of 12, 24, 36, 48, but 12 will be the least bummery because the numbers aren't going to get super huge. So now we're going to swing through and we're going to multiply everybody by 12. And that is that. So when the 12 multiplies to this first one, you should know how to do the hook by now. Divide and multiply, you get negative 8. When the, follow the yellow arrow now, when the 12 multiplies here, you get negative 6. And then the parentheses are still there. But the good news is that the fraction is out of play. So that's nice and peaceful. And then purple arrow, don't forget to come right here. That's 12W. And I am running out of colors here pretty soon. Red arrow goes here. And what does that equal? No, that 12 divided by 4 is 3, negative 9W. And then I am officially now out of colors after this one. So when the white arrow goes across, we get minus 12 times 2 is 24. And I'll just switch back to another green one. So long green arrow all the way over here gives us minus 20. That took two steps of fraction killing, but that's okay. Now the fractions are gone. Any mistakes you make from here on out are just mistakes that have nothing to do with fractions. They're just you being a goober head. So try to work out the goober heads. I make goober head mistakes. You will sometimes just really, really try not to. So we have to now distribute the parentheses away. So on the left, I have negative eight and then minus six W and then plus 18. And then on the right side, uh, you can combine stuff while you're here. It's okay. So like we could put our 12 W and our minus nine W together and our minus 24 and our minus 20 together. And then we do need to clean a little more house on the left. What is negative eight plus 18? It's positive 10 for sure. And we arrive of course at this, which we always do. 99, I should say 99% of the time, math problems wind up looking like that. So, I'm going to move the variables to the left. I was scarred this morning by having to grade those wrong pointing graphs. I can't take it. So I'm going to move my variable to the left 100% of the time from here on out, if given the choice. So I'm going to subtract 3w like this. And I'm going to wind up with negative 9w's on this side. And if they go to that side, then I have to subtract 10 to get him across to there, which means I wind up with negative 54. And then I'm done. I Well, no, I'm not done. That's a lie. But I do have to just divide by negative 9. And since I'm dividing by a negative, that sends up a red flag. And I go, Whoo, switch the sign. And then thank God, you know, your times tables, 54 divided by 9 is 6. And then, of course, the graph would be a solid circle at 6. And the graph goes to the left. I will try to get around later today. I just don't know if time will permit this. I would like to get around and get some individual feedback, especially for those of you who really have some major issues. But I thought it would be more time effective, time efficient for us just to go through the snapshot like this. <clears throat> you know, 20, 20 birds, one stone. So, Any general questions on that? All right. Um, I'm going to pause this video real quick, and then I'm going to pull up my practice quiz, and we're going to run through it. Sorry, it's going to take 15 minutes or so. And then after that, I'll let you get working on the second one. Sound good? Hopefully, you all found some boo-boos. And hopefully, for good sake, you'll never again leave that variable on the wrong side and have a nerve to graph it backwards, because woo, woo, whoosh. Um, yeah, so here you go. Practice quiz. Uh, what are there? Eight? Eight? Are there eight problems? Ten? Do you know? Do you tell? Twelve? Twelve? Ten? All right. <clears throat> yeah, if anyone else needs a red pen, grab it up. Let's get to it. Um, I'm not going to show like full blown work. If you if you have a question, then just let me know. So, like how I did what?
All right, hey, this will be a good indication. Uh, essentially, let's look at it like this. This right now, what we're about to grade, you took the quiz. You're done. You get to grade it right now and see how you did. It doesn't go in the grade book. I need you to think of practice quizzes like that, not just another assignment, but think, I just took the quiz. How would I have done? And then, good news, in a while, I'm going to give you another one. That, that today slash tonight is going to be your first retake. And again, no penalty. It doesn't go in the grade book. Then the third time, your second retake, essentially, the one that matters, will be on Thursday. So approach practice quizzes like that, not just an annoying thing that I said you have to do. Approach it as a chance to see how you would have done. That needs to be the mindset, okay? That's how you're going to get good. So first thing I'm going to do on problem one, did I resume this? Yeah, I did. So first thing we're going to do on problem one is we're going to subtract one from both sides. And I'm going to get negative 12 is less than 4x. And then I am going to divide both sides by 4. And I'm going to be left with this. And I think, I, I hope, I've made myself abundantly clear as to how I feel about that answer. If every one of you could put it backwards and graph it the right way, we wouldn't be having this talk. But, oh my God. So this answer is defective. How should I write this answer? x is greater than negative three when we switch it to get our x on the correct side we have to we have to understand we're switching our entire perspective on the problem so we should have x is greater than negative three again only mark what you need please negative three is all i'm interested in mark it do not color in your boundary circle and greater thans go to the right so I am going to put problems on here that force you into having to understand what it means to get the variable on the correct side. Okay, so be prepared for that. Any questions on the first one? All right, the second problem, uh, you could kill fractions or fraction first. Honestly, I would probably just take away the nine first on this one. So if I subtract the nine across, I get negative one fifth of X is still greater than or equal to seven minus nine, which is negative two. At this point, the only play here is to multiply this entire problem by negative five. It's a smart play. If you multiply by five, then you're going to be stuck with a negative still. So just don't don't mook around with that. Just multiply everything you need. One stop shopping. If you multiply by negative five, then you get the X all by himself. But you do have to be aware of the fact that because we multiplied by a negative, we do have to switch the inequality sign. So it flips back to less than or equal to. And then, of course, if we multiply on this side also by negative 5, then we get 10. All right. So the answer, remember, is not 10. The answer is all x's that are less than or maybe equal to 10. So we go down here. We mark just the 10. We do color in our boundary circle this time. And we shade to the left because that's where the numbers are that are less than 10. Are we perfect so far, 2 for 2? this is recorded so if i mean listen i know you would way rather do other things with your free time but this will be all recorded so if you want to go back if, if you feel like you want to hear something or see something again just go back watch it fast forward to the problem that you're not sure on and that's fine what's up if it's got the or equal to let me put this down for you because I know there's someone else in the room with this question who just chose not to ask. So thank you, Alana. If it's greater than or equal to, or if it's less than or equal to, you color in the circle. If it has the equals with it, you color in the circle. And if it's just a regular greater than or just a regular less than, then that's when you leave the circle open. Good. Yeah, I hope, I'm glad that I hope that helps. Okay, on to the third and fourth problems. Um, for this first one in the second row, I'm gonna go ahead and do two steps at once here. Again, if it bothers you, that's, you just gotta let me know, okay? Bless you. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. I feel that, man. I've been I've been having the sniffles the last couple of days too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move my X's to the left and my numbers to the right, because I'm a creature of habit. You know what I'm saying, Addie? Yeah, Casey, are you with me on this one? That's good. Okay, so I'm going to take my negative X and I'm going to add it across to get eight X's. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take my four and do minus four on both sides. And negative 28 minus four is negative 32. Any issues? 
Okay, I have to divide by eight and I'm not going to switch the sign because I am not dividing by a negative, right? There's a negative in the division problem, but it's not the divisor. So I'm just gonna divide by eight and get X is less than or equal to, keep the sign the same, negative four, 32 divided by eight is four. I'm gonna put a circle at negative four. I am going to color this one in and I'm going to shade to the left like such. Fourth problem, again, you see obviously what I'm testing you on at this point in the quiz. This has nothing mm -hmm. to do with really like fraction killing or anything. This is just, does this kid understand the fundamentals of how to separate the variables from the numbers? And do they understand then how to get the solution to match the graph? That's it. That's all this, this first part's about. I, again, I'm going to now move the X to the left. When I move my X's to the left, that means that I have to subtract away 6X to make that one disappear. <clears throat> Okay, show work on this one maybe, um, just because I want to. And then I'm gonna wind up with negative five X's on the left. If the X's took over the left side, then the numbers are no longer welcome on the left side, which means I have to add this 10 away, destroy it like this. And I'm left with um, is greater than 25 plus 10, like that. I put myself in a position where I have to divide by a negative, but I'm a big boy, I can handle this. So if I divide by negative five, that's okay. I'm going to get X, but I am going to switch my inequality backwards. And then of course, 35 divided by negative five is negative seven. So again, mark only what you need. Negative seven is the only point of interest. Leave the circle open and graph to the less than side, which is left. Are you four for four back there? Is that all the yeses I'm hearing? Three for four? Okay. Anyone four for four? Oh, peace. All right. Let's keep going. Any questions so far? Okay. On to the bottom row. <clears throat> problems five and six. I know they're not numbered, but if they were, they would certainly be called problems five and six, right? Uh, this is just a basic distribution question. So on the left, I get 6x minus 18. Keep the sign the same. And on the right, again, here I am, mid-October, still quizzing you on can you distribute a negative. When you put the negative through the parentheses, you get negative x, but you have to change the 17 to plus. All right. Again, variables, let's just make it a thing. Put them to the left, 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 left. With equations, we don't care. Inequality, some of us, we really should care. So I'm going leftwards. That means I have to add X to both sides, which is going to result in seven over here, seven X's. If the X's take over the left, the 18 is no longer welcome. So to move him, I have to destroy him. I have to add 18 to him to make him go away. And if I add 18 to this right side, 17 plus 18 is 35. And I do not change the sign. What a peaceful little problem. Divide by seven and you get X is more than 35 divided by seven is five. Graph should be marked at five. Circle should not be colored in and the bigger numbers go to the right. Next problem is basically kind of more of the same, just a little bit more negative distribution on this one. So uh, on the right hand side, uh, distributing the negative four gives me negative eight X, change the sign 12. Uh, distribute negative 2 gives me negative 2x. Change the sign, 36. Variables to the left. When I'm writing these problems at home, I'm thinking to myself, I want to make this kid make a choice. There wasn't a choice really on the last problem. The last problem up on the left, if you look at it, if you're a variable on the left person, you added x. If you're a keep the variable positive person, you added X. So we're all going to do, if by some chance on the last problem, you subtract six X from both sides, I'm probably going to refer you for some sort of evaluation because that's just really, really weird, right? But on this problem, I put you in a position where you have to make a choice. But what I'm seeing is I think our best choice is probably just let's all add two X. Consequences, I'm not scared. I'm going to add two X. I'm going to get my variable onto the correct side so that I don't have to talk about it anymore. And when I add that two X across to the left-hand side, negative eight X plus two X is negative six X. And again, if the X's say this is my side, 
then the 12 says, uh, I'll show myself out. And we subtract 12 now from both sides. And 36 minus 12 is, of course, 24. I'm not scared. It's one little rule to memorize, right? Or to put in your notes if you don't want to memorize it. I'm about to divide by negative 6. I'm not scared. I'm going to divide by negative 6 and get x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Mark it, negative four, color in the circle, graph to the bigger side. Zoop. Evans, you good? Yep. Laura? Five for six. And do you know exactly why you missed the one that you missed? So you've gotten five out of six correct. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Anyone still six for six? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Now, if we could just get you to school on time, be a rock star, huh? All right. All right. Uh, these last four problems are intended to be the harder of the four. So uh, if you can make it through these unscathed, good job. Uh, I'm going to just distribute. That's because, you know, no fractions or anything like that. So if I distribute on the left... I am not distributing the 15, of course. You know that by now. I'm distributing just what's attached. That's the negative sign or the minus sign. So I change my x to minus x, and I change my 3 to plus 3. Keep my sign the same. And then again, on the right, clearly, you know what I'm testing you on here. Can this kid distribute a negative? So copy down your 3x, change your x to minus x, and change your 8 to minus 8, and then copy down the rest. You probably don't want to talk about it, do you? Yeah, hey, listen, I've said this before. I think I actually said this one day when I handed out a quiz. The way I, so I make these in a, in a program. You guys don't use it a lot because we're a Google school. We use like Google Docs and all that. But I use Microsoft exclusively when I make these. I hate the, I shouldn't say this on recording. I hate the, the Google apps. I love Microsoft Word. It's what I've always used. So when I format math problems in Microsoft Word, in my equation editor, there's something about the way it lays out text that people sometimes think, it's not just you, Thorup, people think that that 15 is not part of the problem. I'm sorry, but it is, okay? You'll know, like I, I clearly haven't been numbering the questions, right? Don't, don't feel too bad, it happens all the time. So don't fall for that because I'm not trying to trick you. It's just the way it looks. Uh, so now, yeah, Alana, I'm going to combine some like terms. So when I put my 15 and my plus 3 together, I get 18. And then on the right side, when I put my 3x and my minus x together, I get 2x's. And then my minus 8 and my minus 1, I get minus 9. So this is the crossroads. If you made it this far, this is a good sign. Now, don't do anything goofy. Variables. Get them over there to the left side. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, which is going to give me a now negative 3x. And I said this before. If the variables say this is my side, the 18 says, okay, excuse me, I'm out. Right? So if the x's take over the left, the 18 shows himself out by subtracting himself across. And a minus 18 conjoining with a minus 9 becomes a minus 27. Yeah. That's it. That's that separation. Master that, man. I'm going to be good at that. And then we divide by negative 3. Watch out. Because we're dividing by a negative, we have to switch the sign. Negative 27 divided by negative 3 is positive 9. I'm going to quit graphing them. Are you guys okay with that? Just to save. Just to. Is, you guys want me to keep graphing? Okay. I mean, you get the idea. If it's If it's equal, close it in. Less than go to the left. If you're putting your variables on the wrong side still, I remove myself from any part of that conversation. So I'm done. With that. You keep your variables on the other side, don't you? But you do it right. So that's fine. You're good. If you can get it right, I'm out. I'm not going to bug you about that, dude. Uh, next problem, I'm going to distribute uh, on the right-hand side. So actually, while I'm here on this left side, I might as well combine those two dorks. Negative 5x's plus 1x makes negative 4x. No harm in that. Uh, oops, why did I put equals there? Boink, there. Uh, and then I'm going to distribute on the right-hand side. I'm going to get negative 6x minus 6 minus 2x minus 10. Aye. Now we're going to combine like terms over on the right-hand side. 
And I'm going to put my X's together to make minus eight of those. I'm going to put my numbers together to make minus 16 of those. This time, there is no option laid out for me. There just isn't. I need to move the 8X across. So I'm going to add 8X across to both sides. On the left-hand side, if I add 8X, I'm going to get 4X is less than negative 16. This problem does not set up for you to have options. Then I'm going to divide by 4. I'm going to keep the sign the same because I'm not dividing by a negative. X is less than negative 4. That would be an open circle graphed to your left and negative 4. Got it? Do you know why? Yeah. This is a good time to laugh at ourselves. This is a good time to be critical of ourselves, but also just relax and give yourself a little smack on the, what was I? Because this is just practice. And practice is where we are encouraged to make mistakes. And we learn from things like that, Landon, like not copying what we thought was the problem number and forgetting to change signs. And it's this is, so this is just a training ground. No penalty. We want to work out the kinks. That's what we're here for. All right, now the problems get nasty. So on this one, I am going to multiply right away by 12 because you guys, I seem to be losing you here. So hang together, please. We're getting to the worst part. You don't want to start getting lost now. Uh, the fractions are all on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and kill them both. When I multiply by 12, the 12 hits the, you okay? When the 12 hits the first spot right here, I should get 12X. When the 12 hits the fraction, that guardian fraction in front of the parentheses, hook it out, you get minus three. Leave the stuff in parentheses alone. Uh, when the 12 hits that lonely six, you get 72. When the 12 hits the guardian fraction, hook it, you get four. And then leave the stuff in the parentheses alone. At that point, there's really no difference between this and the couple problems that came before it. So I'm going to go ahead and motor through this. Um, 12x minus 9x minus 15 is less than or equal to 72 minus 8x. Watch the signs, plus 12. Combine like terms and we get back to the crossroads, the place where we just almost always get to. 12x is minus 9x's make 3x's. On the right-hand side, 72 and the 12 this time are the like terms and they make 84. I'm going to do two steps at once. I hope you're good with that. I'm going to add the 8x across to give me 11 of those guys. And then I'm going to turn right around and I'm going to add that 15 back across, which is going to give me 99. Nice. And then I'm going to divide by 11. I'm not going to switch the sign because I'm dividing by a positive. X is less than or equal to 9. Solid circle at 9. Graph to the left. Anyone still perfect? Seriously? Impressive. We have three nodding heads. Three people got 11, 9 out of 10, right? Let's keep it going. Good job. I think you guys are probably ready for the quiz. Um, but this time, I am just going to get in there, and my sleeves are already rolled up, but usually people would say, just roll up your sleeves and do it. Um, I'm going to distribute, so not going to not gonna hide from this. Uh, I am going to take the uh, the things in front of the parentheses and distribute them through. So first I'm going to copy down negative one-fifth of X, and here I go, minus 2X plus 3. If you're making a, a pouty face at my television right now, you're probably wondering how did I get 2. And if you just look at my little green arrow up at the top of the TV, do you see it way up here? When I did that multiplication problem, the 3 and the 3 conveniently divided each other away, leaving just the 2. I just got lucky. And then, of course, copy down the minus 10, right? Ooh, switch colors. That is a terrible color for showing work. My God. I can't see that. Minus 10. And then on the right-hand side, copy down the 5. And here I go again. I'm not going to get lucky this time. When I multiply the 2, I'm going to get minus 6 fifths of X and minus 2. If you made it this far, now's a good time to just swoop in and kill some fractions. You could also combine some like terms. Totally up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and combine some terms. It'll be less multiplication. So you'll notice that these that I'm circling in red can. Is there more? Where is he? Where is he? Show yourself. Oh, there you, you little turkey. So there's a minus two thirds of X. Well, he was hiding from me. He's a clever little booger. Uh, so at this point, I'm still going to combine things I've circled in red, make my life a little easier. Uh, so I'm going to have 
negative one fifth of x minus two x, three minus 10 is minus seven. And then the five minus two make three minus six fifths of x minus two thirds of x. So I like that. And then I have less stuff I have to multiply by. At this point, what am I going to multiply by? 15 is my guy. So I'm going to multiply by 15. We're almost there, folks. Okay, sorry. Things like this take forever. If I multiply by 15, I have to multiply. I, you know, I'm not a fortune future teller, but I can tell you when mistakes happen on this step. I'm not even saying if anymore. Sorry. When they happen, it's going to be because you little knuckleheads forgot to multiply stuff. And I'm just telling you, you got to remember, if it's out in the open, it's getting smacked. So this has six multiplications it's got to do. 15 is about to be a busy man. So 15 in the first one, you get a negative 3. 15 on the second one, you get a minus 30x. Uh, 15 on the next one is huge, minus 105. 15 hitting the 3 makes 45. 15 hitting that next fraction makes negative 18x. And 15 hitting the last one makes minus 10x. And that's... I don't have any superpowers that you don't have. We all have that power. We can divide and multiply. So that's all I'm doing there is I'm just hooking away those fractions and then multiplying. That's it. Now's the time to combine like terms. On the left-hand side, I see some X's that'll make negative 33. On the right-hand side, I see some X's that will make minus 28. And now it's time to do the thing we do, and that is get the stuff together. X is to the left, numbers to the right, divide it out, boom. So when I move all my X's to the left, I got to add 28X, which gives me negative 5X. I then have to turn around and add 105 to both sides, which gives me 150. And then I divide by negative 5. And I uh, say again? No, just 150. 105 plus 45. 150. When I divide by negative 5, I do have to change the sign. So x is less than negative 30. Jackson, did you stay alive? Jesse? Did you stay perfect 10 for 10? 9 out of 10? 9 out of 10? 10 out of 10. Nice job. All right, I'm going to pause this or not. Even, I'm not going to pause it. I'm going to stop it. The last 13 minutes of class, I'm going to hand out a second practice quiz. I am sorry. I, I try not to say you need to go home and work, but I'm going to say today that in your best interest, you're going to use the rest of time to get as much done. You should get it done tonight. When we grade it and go over it tomorrow, you will get more benefit from that if it's done. If you're writing them down for the first time tomorrow, you're going to miss out. So that's that. So tomorrow we'll go over Thursday's the quiz.